And hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Thomas, aka Mr. Warburg, here playing some Gears 5 Horror Mode with my boy Chris. Yo. Also, I just realized I didn't put a, a space between my boys, which is my boy. It, yeah, it sounded really boy. weird in my head. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're here doing a little uh, Gears 5 kind of review slash spoiler, cash, spoiler cast of Gears 5. Oh, well, this guy, this okay, that control's different. Yes, it is. All I right. can't even help you. So while we're securing the fabricator here, let's go, you know, we're going to be talking about Gears 5, so a little bit of a spoiler warning. We're not going to, you know, say, you know, don't listen or anything at any given time. You're going in. We're talking spoilers. Where am I putting we're, this, by the way? I've never played this right map. In. Uh, let me let me control. Hold up. I got back up. There. Now I can let go. So anyway, Gears 5, uh, what we liked. Um, I'm mostly a campaign guy when it comes to the Gears stuff. Um, this is probably going to be the first game I actually dive into the multiplayer at any great length. Um, so since it's my channel, I'll start first. So what I loved about Gears, number one, first and foremost for me since I'm a campaign guy, is the story. And holy shit, it was awesome. Like, it was fantastic. Yes. I think probably the good. best campaign outside of Gears 3, which had the, you know... You know, two two games leading up into it, whereas this this game story only had the first one, which was fairly light. You know, in terms of story, just by its nature of starting up a new a new chapter in the Gears universe. Uh, other things I loved in regards to the story, uh, Kate was fantastic. The shifting the main protag protagonist to not being a phoenix, uh, unlike Judgment, mm -hmm. actually worked because Gears Judgment had a lot of issues on the story side for me. Um, had issues, yes. Yeah. I think it was a great game, though. I oh, don't get me wrong; we'll get it was not a bad game. Here. But we'll get it, we'll get into that towards the tail end of the review. It was definitely not a bad game. Um, and the other thing for me that really just like blew me away was how much fucking lore payoff we got from the previous games, like stuff about the the cog uh, intervening in the UIR civil war with the Hammer of Dawn, the stuff with uh, like how the Locust was created and Queen Mira. That shit was awesome. Yeah, that got my uh, uh, that like act act two was maybe the like some of the most fun in video gaming I've had in a while. It was awesome. Act two of this game. Act two of this game, like with the with the village, and then you go to New Hope and Mount Kadar. Like it was just so cool, and I had an absolute blast with it. Um, other things for me, the oh okay, I'm gonna I gotta turn the game off audio down a little bit more. Sorry, people. Uh, shit, what was I saying? The continued presence and more consistent presence of the OG Delta team, rather than them showing up out of nowhere in Act 4 of Gears oh, 4. Oh, yeah, like they actually, like, they started the game with you. Yeah, and like Baird's there, Cole's there, Marcus is there. You know, it's it's all, like, it's more cohesive, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously it's a big jump up from where Gears 4 was, which was a much more... Just kind of playing it safe game, which is not wrong for a studio's first entry into a you know storied franchise to do. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, there's some energy up there. I'm gonna grab that. Go for it. Um, but yeah, other things. The gameplay, the gunplay is always awesome, and that continued to be the case. But when that's not the best part of the game, you know you've got something awesome on your hands. And I think the well, the, ga the gameplay when, when mechanics. That's not when that's not the best part of the game, but other it's, things it's of the still game are good, really yeah. good. Yeah, exactly. You can have really bad everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when, when the gunplay is awesome, and it's, like, that's not what I'm taking away from a Gears game. Right. That's pretty good, from a campaign perspective, at least. And yeah, the, from a... <laughs> yeah. From what we have we have so lovingly considered to be a Fast of the Furious franchise. Of pretty much. Games. And they really make it work. And then the the gameplay mechanics shifting to kind of like an open world light, kind of like uh, what the new Tomb Raiders and what God of War 2018 did, to, to a little bit lesser extent, given that it's a different type of shooter. But uh, God, it just worked so well, and I was a big big fan of it. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple other last things for me before we get to Chris's uh, takes on the game. Let me kill this DR1 here. There he goes. He's dead. Uh, is the jack abilities really added some fun stuff to the game. I, uh, agree. I used the shock trap like all the fucking time. And a few of the others. There's some I some I didn't use, like I never really used the shield because it came so late in the game. Um uh, yeah, it really did come in a weird time. Yeah. And other than having I was the, wondering 
with that kind of stuff, they're going to do like a new game plus type scenario with this game. I could see them rolling that out, you know, six months down the road. Yeah. You know, like that's what a lot of you know, bigger games are doing now is going to that, adding that in as a kind of like a free add on, basically. Mm -hmm. And that would be pretty cool to play through this game on insane new game plus, but you get all of Jack's abilities from the from the start. I don't know how they'd work that into the story, given that some of the abilities come from the story, but yeah, it'd be interesting that is to see weird. what they do. But if you think about it, that's the same thing that happens with a lot of other games where exactly. they're part of the story. Like the, the Arkham games, getting the... Like in the first game, I, I've played it recently, you start by getting pretty much the uh, the exploding oh gel. And like you get that from the Batmobile, but on New Game Plus, you just have it from the beginning. It's like... Yep. They just they did it just fine. It's just whatever. All right, and then my last point is that man, the visuals in this game are amazing. Like Act Three is something straight out of a Star Wars, like the newest Star Wars, like the like the pat the, that planet crate that they're on with those skiffs that are flying around in the red sand and shit. Act Three felt like that. It was awesome. Loved loved it. And in Gears Four had some sweet visuals too, but this was just on a whole other level, and I really enjoyed it. But that's it for me for my main what I loved takeaways from Gears 5. Chris, what do you got? Um, for me, um, I also, like, I kind of, like, hit the same points pretty much. Um, for me, honestly, for the story, I love hard-hitting stories. And from the get-go of this game, from Act 1 all the way through, there were some hard-hitting things, like... And well, we said it's a spoiler cast. In Act 1, JD has a rough time with a Hammer of Dawn situation. And that's it's that's pretty like, oh my gosh, this is what this game is. And then Act 2, you have Kate who's essentially who essentially kills her uncle because she's not in control of herself. Um but she ends up killing her uncle, which like that's the person, the one person that she had left in her life after like finding out what JD had done. And then, um, and then the, the end of the game, which we'll, I think we'll, we'll talk about that during your next section. Yeah. And we can have an argument about that. Okay. But I liked, I liked it. Okay. Um, again, Kate is amazing. I actually liked how they did the relationship between Kate and Dell in this one, mm -hmm. where they they brought them together through a through JD's misdoings, and then they became they became close. And I thought they, I I just enjoyed how they did that relationship, and it made the end of the game a little bit easier for me per se. Um, but I liked how they they brought that story element into it, and they took away from. Like, they literally took away from Phoenix in every single case of the word in this game. Like, you played as JD in the first act, which wasn't really that long of an act, and then the rest of the game, what, act two, you don't have a Phoenix with you. You have one over comms. And then act three, he's just like a... He's just with you, but he doesn't really play too much to the story. So, whoops. Um, so I liked I liked how they took a back seat to the Phoenix, and they made it about the world. Oh, totally, I agree with that. Yeah, because because they made it like the the previous games have all been, yo, we're uh, we're following the story of the Phoenixes, and the Phoenixes are who run this this uh, this world, and they're pretty much the part of everything climactic that happens in this world. And while that's technically still true in this sense, they take much more of a backseat, and it makes it feel like a more realistic world to know that the ones that have been considered the the like cornerstone to everything that's been happening, they are not the cornerstone anymore. And I like that a lot. Um... Uh, like you said, good good callbacks to Gears 2 and the old campaign. And also good callback because that was 
possibly one of the most critically worse games of like the main series um, based on the campaign and the story because people just thought what it was just confusing. They didn't really understand what the point of it was, but now they've kind of retroactively given it a point. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was very interesting. And I'm glad that they, when they made the coalition, they kept Rod Ferguson so that they had somebody who worked on the amazing, the, the amazing first trilogy now working on this second trilogy and they're able to keep things in line um, and within world. So good job to them for that. And then uh, I don't know if you saw it because I posted in there when I started doing my notes, but there's possibly a second Phoenix child. Yeah. Which... I, don't, I don't think that's, I think that's how she died. Was that the kid died? Miscarriage. That it seems, it seems to be heavily implied sense. that the fertility programs was is what killed her. Right. So, but you've watched the boys. Could it be a boys scenario? Oh, I don't think so. I think I think that's one too many twists. You know. Yeah, but this is a Fast and Furious video game. <laughs> eh, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it would fit. Given given how hard like a big of a change they're doing to the franchise at the end, I think that's one too many. That's too much to put on Gear Six to make that become a reality. That's true. Which at this point, it's like, who do you follow in Gear Six then? Do yeah, you that's, continue with Kate. Do I think go they're gonna, with and I think they should because yeah, oh, Laura I Bailey agree. killed it. That was awesome. Oh my gosh, that's something I was I was streaming this the other day doing the collectibles run, and I just had to go through like I had to say like for a game that's been known to just be a let's run around, kill people, chop saw people in half with a chainsaw gun, shoot off their heads and have this satisfying explosion effect. To have the the voice actors of this game put so much passion into it and make it like an actual like story game and not just here's another fanboy game. Really good job. Um with I don't who does JD? Uh, it's like Can Liam McIntyre. Ian McIntyre, he did a fantastic job. Like I think he does a great job every single time. Um, I hear him speak. Laura Bailey, of course, is just insane. Um, like I don't, I don't know if you can find a better voice actress out there, like for video games and stuff. Personally, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I loved her. So I think the story was was great. For those reasons, gameplay, Jack's abilities, awesome. We don't really need to touch on that again. They're just awesome. The new guns, the grenade lancer, the... Yeah, the lancer GL. Ever... That thing was awesome. Yeah. Did you ever use the the big old batons, clubs that the... The breaker wardens... maces? No. Yes. Dude, those are I mean, awesome. I guess I did use them a little bit, but never like consistently. Yeah, those are those are great. I that's just a fun. It was literally, oh my gosh, they gave us a band hammer. They that's true. The it does feel hammer. like the gravity hammer. You know, now that yeah. I think about it. Oh, let's see what else. Hang on. Um. Let's see. Oh, I I kind of I slightly disagree with your your points on the open world part. I'm not saying I disliked them. I'm just saying that they felt weird to me. Weird how? Um, like, I guess for me, like I've I'm a huge Gears fan. I've read all the books. I've played all the games. Like, all of this stuff is. I kind of consider this to be my game franchise. Like, I will always get this. And I sit down and play it in one sit through the first time I play these games. It took me 12 hours to beat this game the first time, which is way different than the other games. But it just felt weird. It kind of, to me, felt out of place. Um, but again, not, not in a bad sense, just in a weird sense. Um, my... My computer went sleepy modes. Oh, that's fun. Oh, shit. I haven't been paying attention if I'm dropping frames or not. 
Oh, I missed. I'm gonna go down probably. All right. No, I'm not. I'm the best. I can type in my stuff. Um. And then finally, like like you were saying with the visuals, for me it was the colors. You jump into the game and there's this. You're in the Bahamas type of feel. There's blues. There's very vibrant greens. Yeah, it's definitely which, a from, far cry from Gears One through Three. Yes, it's. And in a way, it's a little bit of a difference from the last game as well. Oh, that's you. Um, just because last game, they brightened the game up, but they didn't give it more color, I don't say. I would say they just took the, the browns and grays that were there and made them more tan and white. Um, but in this game, you get a lot of colors. I really like the vibrancy and the addition of that to the game. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's a pretty quick run through of what I, I found fun. Ooh, it, have you played escape mode yet? No, I have not. Escape mode's all right. You got to get into a good squad because there are some people that are just really stupid. Oh. Um, that kind of comes with the territory with that kind of game mode. And we're in Horde. There's some new stuff for Horde. Um, new way the fabricator works. I don't know if you've seen in the bottom right, but there's perks that you yep. can get i played a little bit of my pro so, um if you buy three and get a kill with it you uh you already get got an that achievement, achievement. yep yeah i got it too um, how do you bring that up again uh in oh shit in between rounds you press y that's oh, what it was because i only played one round with kate and that was it yeah kate but, yeah. but yeah so Kate's that's awesome. our yeah, I'm going to turn the, the game down a little bit more, just because. It's like a negative 40 right now. <laughs> oh, there goes a big... I love... I really I really do like the grenade launcher, uh, G Lancer. It's fun. Yeah, with the with the drop shot stuff. Is that a snipe rifle I saw? Okay, Scion... Oh, Scion didn't die. Now it's going to die. Oh, that's a claw. I, uh... Oh, and the ultimate abilities. Like, each character has their own ultimate abilities. Yeah. I think mine is I go cloaked. I don't know how to use JDs. What is JDs? It's like an airstrike thing, and I keep trying to hit Y, and it doesn't do anything. Huh. I'm going to have to look up a... Cloaked. Going to have to look up a guide. But uh, anyway, um, let's see. So we've talked about... Okay, I gotta kill this guy. Ooh, Nasher time. Here we go. Ooh, get that pop shot. Okay. Nice. All right. So now we've talked about what we both liked, or you know, in some cases loved, and now let's talk about what we didn't. Um, so for me, one of the things I didn't like so much was the very end. And not to say that I hated it. Don't get me wrong. I think it it worked but not as well as I think what they maybe could have done. Uh-huh. Um, and that is not have the choice. Because narratively, Dell dying makes a lot more sense. Well, you, who did you choose? I saved JD. Because you narratively, saved, Del, Del dying makes more sense because he, he's got nowhere to go in Gear 6. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, his arc is done. Like... You know, he was there for Kate, and it's not like he's got some destiny or whatever or anything. Mm -hmm. and he doesn't have a redemption arc to, to finish off in six. And, you know, that it just it doesn't feel right to have him live over JD in that sense from a, from a storytelling right. perspective. So the game the game killed Dell, right? In your game? Oh, wait, you left it. You let it happen. What do you mean? No, I'm, I'm. So you chose to save JD. Yeah. So the game Kill, killed Del. kills Dell. Well, whoever you save, the other one dies. Right. I didn't, very so I I had picked Dell, and I had just been thinking, well, this could have been. I didn't. I didn't remember specifically because this was eleven hours into my gaming session. Yeah. Um. I didn't remember if it said just choose one, because yeah, it could have been one of those. It's a fake choice. Type of deal. Yeah, see, that for me is where I wasn't a fan of them throwing it in at the end. Another shooter that had a similar decision with who you save and who, who you let die 
was Wolfenstein, the Wolfenstein, the New Order, the first in that okay. new, the new version of Wolfenstein. Uh-huh. In the beginning of Wolfenstein, you have a choice between saving your grizzled old veteran Scottish partner or a private who you've been mentoring. And oh, gotcha. That actually does affect the story and the and the rest of that Wolfenstein and in Wolfenstein too, uh, and in quite different ways. It doesn't mm-hmm. affect the, the main story beats, but they're both given you know very fun and interesting individual stories. But it's at the beginning of the game. Not at the very right. end, where the rest of the game has not had you make decisions like that. You know, like, like I've talked to a few people who have been like, yeah, I didn't think it was real. Like, they were thought they were watching a cutscene, and the game timed them out. So, like, they had, to, they had to die and redo it again. Like, the game didn't prime you for that decision before you had to make mm-hmm. it. If that makes sense? Yeah. And then I got down a rabbit hole with uh, the J-Bros, and uh, I was like, you know, it feels like they made the choice after, like, because, like, they thought they were going to do it and then everybody kept picking to save JD because it felt like they cut part of JD and Foz's story out of the game. Right. It feels like there's an act missing because Mm, it feels like we needed to see JD and Foz both realize that, oh, Jin and the Cog are really fucked up. Like, this is bad. Right. Because they just show up totally different than how we last see them in the beginning of Act 2. And you don't see the transition. You hear it through some awesome in-world dialogue, like some really, really good stuff. But you don't see yeah. it. You know what I mean? And that yeah, I get you. And I think if you had seen it, that you would be more likely to pick Save JD than Dell. And I almost wonder if they ended up like, scrapping that. Not that they like had a finished product and they cut it, but that they decided, right. you know... They Let's wanted to make the choice actually matter, and so they did do yeah. it. But it felt like that part of the story never got fully cooked, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, and again, it still worked. It still was very emotionally impactful, like especially how everyone reacts. And I think people reacting to Dell's death was better. Like how Foz, you know, like Foz actually has something to do. Like when when you interesting when you pick Dell, when you save Dell, Foz just kind of ha- shakes his head. And doesn't say anything. But when you save JD, like, man, Royal Coley's got a couple, like, awesome lines. Like, he comes in being like the... Uh, did you watch any of the scenes of the other version? No, I'm I'm doing my second playthrough to see the scenes there. Yeah. Do you want... Okay, it's I won't spoil that for you, because it is it is. This is the one different. spoiler we're not doing, folks. Well, it's, it's, not, it's a spoiler thing, because my co-host hasn't seen them both. But... Yes. Uh, all right, I'm going to leave him... I'm going to leave him to die. Yeah, like, like for me, it was. So you made the choice based off of the story for the next one makes sense. Yeah, it just it just felt right to me, if that makes sense. Because I was just seeing, kind of seeing the gears turn of the. Come get a come get an achievement. Where? Uh, just come kill the guy that's pulling me. Oh, I already got that one. Oh well, you can get it in the campaign. I'm coming. It happens to be all the time. Oh, I will say that that is one of the <laughs> dumbest decisions. What? I uh, hate that you can't break out of those. You yeah. can't break out of those. You can't break out of pouncers. Oh, or anything damn like flash grenades. Um, how do you use this fucking airdrop thing? It's really pissing me off. But um, but yeah, it just felt like mechanically the choice didn't work as well as I think they hoped it would. Not that it was awful, and it definitely not like a Mass Effect 3 type situation mm-hmm. where everybody hates it. It just... I don't think it would... I think it would have hit harder to have, like, have the game take the choice out of your hands. And like, no, this character you've gotten to know, and he's been awesome and had some great moments with your main protagonist, yeah, he's fucking dead. Like, just have him get murdered by Reyna. Like, right. that would have made... I think that would have made more sense for the story that was presented in Gears 5. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you introduce an open world type stuff, you introduce more player choice and more player agency over the story. So you have to take that into account, but I think they didn't quite stick the landing for me. But that's just my take on it. And I find that very weird because like you, you said you made your decision based off of story. I made my decision based off of role playing my character. Yeah. And I, that's, Kate. I think that's where the disconnect is, is 
up until this point, it, there was no RPG. It was, this is Marcus and, like, Delta's story, and you're just playing through it. And now it's, now it's your story. You have agency over it. Yeah. And that definitely makes a difference. Yeah, so, like, I, I chose Dell because I was playing as Kate the entire game, and I had been hanging out with Dell the entire time, and Dell had showed himself that he was willing to be with Kate, like, to help her out in all these scenarios and not care that that she was essentially part of the locust for a little bit like so that's why i chose dell i chose dell for those reasons and it did make me be like oh my gosh this is like really weird going forward with the jd scenario and I don't. So have you seen both of the yeah. both of the choices? Okay. So like I at this point I'm wondering. Well, how do they do the cutscenes differently when I choose to save JD type of thing? So I don't know. I I thought I liked that they gave you a choice. I do agree that it just seems kind of just seemed weird. But it also did follow along with JD's kind of. I feel like there was, in the beginning of the game, he makes a choice literally in the first chapter, and then Daddy Marcus goes and says, or, or JD says, that was a, I took a necessary risk, and Daddy Marcus says, that was not necessary. Necessary means you have no other options. That was not necessary. And I feel like that the choice that JD made to get us to the point where we had to make the choice was another one of those that was not necessary. Yeah. So I feel like that also plays into the fact of fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. I kind of, I, that was another thing that, that I kind of thought of when I was making that decision that he just, he didn't learn. So I was going to save the guy that was by my side the entire time. Yeah, the see, guy, that's where... Instead of the guy who's yeah, had Not to get too months. narratively into it, but I would have done a whole, like, have Dell be the one who drops his knife and JD doesn't, so JD can free himself, and then she kills Dell. You know? That gotcha. just would have worked for me, but that's that's getting kind of in the weeds. So what else didn't we like to not to harp on the choice too much? Because that is kind of the big thing with the end of the game. Um, yeah, and, then, and that that's that's definitely something to that I think needs to be talked about because it's it a gonna, whole new and I'm hoping aspect that they, to the game. I'm hoping they appropriately carry it forward, you know, into the next game. And given the technical leaps they made in this game, I think they will. Yeah. Because this game is a huge jump from Gears 4. At least just like in terms of the number of things you can do in the game. It's a lot. And that's not easy to do in a game, you know, that's in its now sixth mainline entry uh, of a series. Oh, yeah. fucking leeches. But, uh, yes. Yeah. So, the other big thing on. I didn't like, that's the only other thing that kind of ticks me off was, man, they've had a lot of server issues. Holy crap. Oh, like, I've, I could go on for days about like, how I hate the servers. And it'll, no doubt, no doubt it'll stabilize over time. But, man, there's just a lot. It definitely is weird, like... Why would you decide to put all of your, like, all of your multiplayer servers the same as your single-player servers? And why do you even have single-player servers if not for just campaign or, like, co-op? Yeah. Like, it just seems weird. I agree. They did that really weird. Because, man, I just had a bunch of server, a bunch of achievements and a bunch of collectibles just not track and i constantly had to replay the same section like there's an achievement where you can uh, execute a bunch of dbs 100 of the 100 dbs that have been turned yeah and mine just didn't track it stopped at 74 for like three days and then it started working again on my second playthrough of the campaign it's nuts mm. yeah it was really weird i i mean i had i still had issues two days ago with the collectibles which is not, not yeah and i had some issues yesterday that I eventually got to work again, but it was like, why? Why is this so hard? This is yeah. this should not be the case. 
Um, now that's all the single player stuff. I think we've mostly hit. Any other things you want to touch on, Chris? Um, gosh, things I didn't like. I don't, there, there's a. I don't think there's a lot to dislike in this game. I like I. They did such a fantastic job with this. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm massively impressed. My, my hype for this has been. It's it's been. Uh, shown that I should have had that hype. So. Yeah, like they they lived up to the hype. Um, yes, I've seen some people on Twitter complaining a lot about the multiplayer side, which for me not something I've ever really been huge into the series multiplayer components. Um, but I will be once I start playing it. I'm getting into it a little bit. Don't get me wrong, but like the horde mode, I'm having fun with, and all these other things. And for me, I think one of the things it boils down to, you know, is gears was never just a multiplayer thing. You know, whereas, like, no. a contemporary for them would be Halo, which was known for excellent of both, like, all of them up until, I want to say, Halo 5. And whereas Gears, for I think for most people, the casual audience has definitely been kind of the story. Because that's just its cultural... You know, everybody knows the Lancer and all that, and that's because of the story. Yeah, That's not because of the multiplayer. Um, so I think, I think the single player carries more weight. And I think it shows, given that that's what they've really seemed to pour so much time into as a studio. Yeah, and as for for Gears, of, like pretty much for any game, for me, is I buy a game for the single player and I stay for the store or stay for the multiplayer. I, I thought that's like how, that's that's how I go with my games. So like the like Gears of War three was that first one that I was like of this series that I was like, well, I love the. The single player and i love the multiplayer and this is this is one where i feel like i'll like the multiplayer too now i don't know do they have ultimate abilities in the the multiplayer i don't know i'm kind of interested because i, I know think there's some it. passives like Foz can like kind of because he's a sniper can kind of like see through walls and stuff oh okay but that's i haven't really dived too much into that so I don't want to speak That's too much thing, on the multiplayer because room. I haven't seen it a bunch. And this was a spoiler cast, so we were talking mostly about the campaign. Yeah. All right. Well, this guy's crawling around. I'm not going to execute him yet. We could probably finish up the rest of our stuff. Um, so, Chris, I think, I think we've hit most of the big stuff. So now it's time for the mm -hmm. real deal. Let's rank this series. Let's rank the main Gears games. You go first. What, like um, one, to, one through six, pretty much. Cause that's six games, right? One through five plus yeah. judgment. So, yes. Yeah, six yes, games. One through five and judgment. So give me your gears um, ranking. So probably, and let me let me say this. This is unlike Star Wars. Like I feel like Star Wars, they they all have a good one. Um, like all of them have their good parts and everything. Like it's hard to rank them. I, I would disagree with that. I think there's three. I that mean, are pretty I, clearly at the bottom. <laughs> What? Which one? Three. There's three of them that are clearly at the bottom of the series. Well, I mean, they're clearly at the bottom, but it's. But you get what I'm saying. I, I get. Like, I get. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to. I'm trying to rank six gold medalists right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, but for me, I would probably say. Years. And you're doing two. ascending, so like six to one. It, yeah, okay. here's two is my least favorite. Okay, and that's hard. It's hard to pick. Here's two. Then gears judgment. Okay. Then gears one, gears four. Okay. One. No, four, yeah, four, one, five, three. So three is at the top. Okay. With two at the bottom. All right. Well, we actually agree on our top spot, but here's my ranking. Here, you die. Die, die, Locust. Thank you. Oh, power tap. Um, yeah, my bottom is Gears War Judgment. It just never hooked me, and I don't think I ever actually finished the campaign. Uh, let's okay. see what else. Then I have Gears 4, mostly because it played it really, really safe. But, like, again, from 
from four through three, they're all really close. Like, for me, there's no clear, definitively, oh, man, this is totally worse and we all know it kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then... Because also, like, the carrot, like, it felt like, especially, like, we were bringing it up when we played the game, like, it feels like they brought in OG Delta to, like, kind of save the story almost, you know, and they all show up with their huge-ass giant robots, and it just kind of felt yeah. dis disjointed. Not bad, just a little disjointed. Um, and then yeah. number four for me would be Gears 1. Okay. Uh, which is definitely a simpler game compared to the later two in the trilogy. Felt like they didn't quite know what they had in terms of the campaign story things. So they had some, like the gameplay was perfect right out of the gate, which is why it was so popular anyway. Uh, and Marcus Phoenix was awesome from the beginning. Just didn't yes. quite, not all the pieces were quite there yet for me. Uh, then I would put Gears 2, like the, the stuff with New Hope and the Mount Kadar stuff. That was awesome. That was just some really cool, and the and the rift worm like cutting cutting out in from the you know going out from the inside just oh yeah so dumb but so good literally in the beginning of the Fast and Furious like that's when that parts. that tone started for me and yeah they continued to carry it through and it was done really really well plus two has Ty and Dom's wife like oh god oh, just. My. Now, like, Dom's wife is probably one of the, the hardest things I've ever had to watch in a video yeah, game. Yeah, and like that was like, that was it. just really, really well done. Uh, and then number three, no, number two for me would be the one we're playing right now, which is Gears 5. Uh, obviously, we talked about how much we love that. And then Gears 3 for me, as uh, I said, it's a unanimous for two people is the top spot at Gears 3 because it's just the complete package of the multiplayer, the horde mode, and the campaign. Yeah. The Dom's death and the fin like the like Marcus at the end when he's just like distraught on the beach with Anya. Awesome. Yeah. Just awesome. And game all the way. Around. And that to me was like, I can't not put gears three cause I've played that campaign a bunch. Um, but I also played hundreds of hours of multiplayer in that game. Yeah. So that, like, yeah, it's, I played a lot of that game back in the day. Yeah. For, that was like your halo reach for me. I played so yeah. fucking much of that game. But yeah, Gears I 3, I think, is pretty boy. unanimously the top spot. So, I think that wraps up, unless, Chris, you have any final thoughts on Gears 5 or the Gears series uh, in general. Give me Gears 6 now. Hell yeah, man. I'm very excited. <laughs> but oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on that note, we're going to go kill some more monsters. And uh, yeah, if you guys like the video, I'll pro hopefully be editing this down a little bit where we just stop talking to focus on killing things. But we'll yes. see. And uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and do all that. And you can check out Chris at twi twitch.tv slash gamercruchador. This is he's, truth. He streams a lot of stuff. I stream over at twitch.tv slash Warper. The links will be in the description. And we'd love to see you guys over there. Bye. Bye, guys. Time to murder. Murdering. <laughs>